Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? What's good? What's good? What's good? This is your boy, LaShawn Sugar Ray Marston, host of the Sugar Ray Show, here with another phenomenal episode. We have the multi talented, multi faceted, incredibly driven, passionate, powerful fellow Pisces, Miss Jodell. Uh, how do you pronounce the name? I never knew how to pronounce the last name. Are you saying it right, Jodell? And what's Jodell? What's the last name? Duverso. Duverso. Mm -hmm. She's phenomenal, man. I've known her for a while. Absolutely incredible, absolutely inspiring. I'm going to read her bio for you guys and let you know exactly who we'll be talking to today. Jodel Duverso is the founder of Femme Du LLC. In 2014, Jodel was first known as an erotic writer on her social media platforms before she became known as a muse. Her sensual writing was the first creative talent that inspired her to become her own muse for her poetry. She is remembered as an erotic writer and sensual performer from Brooklyn who embraced sensual art as her discipline. Through her work, she created the Femme de Sore persona. Femme de Sore was portrayed as a sensual woman who is free with her body and rebels or rebels against the confines of this world by breaking the silence imposed upon her and women who dared to be sensual. Her body of work was and still is delivered through a series of poems and intense essays, as well as visuals, audios, and photographs about sensuality in art, nude art, and boudoir. In 2016, Jodell worked at art establishments like the Art Students League of New York, Society of Illustrators, School of Visual Arts, and FIT. She has also worked with a great range of artists, from sculptors to painters and photographers, who have given her experience in the art world, the ease and confidence to pursue her passions for sensual art. When Jodell launched her subscription platforms, she became a full-time sensual creator encouraging her audience to explore their sensuality by helping them to experience sexual comfort and practice self-care. Now, Femme de Soul LLC lives to carry on her desire and goal to promote the creative expression of sensuality by providing the products, resources, and services to sensual enthusiasts. Oh, man, you've done a lot. You are a lot. You will do a lot more. How are you feeling today? Um, I feel really good. It's been a good week so far, so... I feel nice. amazing. Nice. So let's get right to it. You know, um, when we first connected about a decade or so ago, you know, um, you were writing, um, you know, erotic poetry on Facebook. Um, I think you had a full time job as a, I think a flight attendant or something like yeah, that. I remember. I, I remember. I remember. And I remember the transition. And yeah. for all of the people listening, I know a lot of people. I know a lot of powerful people, a lot of great people. But this woman here, her journey mm -hmm. from Again, writing poetry online, working full time to then like just elevating. It's been constant elevation for you. So let's talk about that. Um, when did you know you was a writer? And how did you at that time balance writing sensual art with your work? So I, well, I started writing since I was like 14 years old okay. uh, when I was back home in Haiti. So that's a gift I gained from my father. Like my father really inspired me to work, to write because he was also a writer. So nice. I loved his style of writing. So I started writing at that time. And my poem was, uh, my poetry at that time was more like romantic, short stories, kind of, um, uh, you know, like uh, short stories, kind of like stories. So we, at that time, I just began writing. And when I moved there in the US, you know, I had like a writing block until I started, I started becoming interested in, in using and posing for artists. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at that time when you met me online on Instagram, I was writing a lot, but I had interest of becoming a muse. So what I did is I used my work, my, my poetry to start posing. So I started mm -hmm. taking pictures on my phone and like acting like the characters in yep. my stories yep. so that's how i started and then i quit my job you know it was like a it was like a biz a big risk for me i quit mm -hmm. my job and i'm like you know what i'm gonna pursue my dream of becoming a muse i didn't mm -hmm. know like i was gonna become a businesswoman or i didn't know what kind of business i was gonna have from starting out you know starting out as a muse i didn't know anything so like you know, a lot of people always say, how did you become Femme du Soir? How, how did it start? Like, so really it's, it's my writing that brought me here. It is yeah. my writing and yeah. the desire to connect with my body, the desire to 
um, explore myself sensually. So I use my writing and my musing inclination. I use those two things to become, you know, if I'm just one, like I created a person. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. And you know, um, I think the first, um, I think we connected on Facebook before Instagram. And I think the, for, the first post I remember interacting with you on was um, one of your poems. And it was a photo, I think, of you. It was a black and white photo. Mm -hmm. It was a black and white photo, I think, like in the rain, or you might have, you know, um, put like, 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 like some rain effect on the pictures with yeah. an umbrella. And I was like, wow, you know, it captured my attention because I knew instantly that the character in that photo was a representation of the character in your poem. Yeah. Right? It was powerful. So what did what did coming from a Caribbean background, what did your parents say when you told them you was quitting your job to pursue your writing and music full time? How did how, how did that go for you? So I didn't tell them what I was gonna do. I just you know, <laughs> I, did, I did tell them that I was going to create a brand called Femme Jusoir. Like my family always knew. They always mm -hmm. knew that I had a dream of creating something of my own. But when I quit my job I didn't know I was going to quit my job either. Like I just quit my job because I wasn't fulfilled. So I didn't know that was the year I was going to quit my job. So it just so happened that I wanted to explore my, you know, muse, musing interests like full time. So I ended up quitting my job. So, but I never told my parents, oh, I'm going to become a muse and I'm going to post nude. <laughs> it was never like that. It was never like that. It was just, so, it happened, you know, it's just life, like like any, any, anything. You don't know when they're going to happen. You take a leap of faith and it just happened. So even when I quit my job, I didn't know how I was going to become a muse. I didn't know how it was going to happen. You know, I started posing here and there, taking pictures, and then like, I started researching online for like art schools and I sent my resume. I didn't have a resume. <laughs> I didn't have anything. I just like took a leap of faith. It was a risk, you know? So I just randomly sent everybody my resume. I um, DM a few artists. A lot of them didn't reply to me because I didn't see anything on my page. A lot of artists, once they don't see anything, they don't give you a chance. But one artist did and he was one of the biggest artists. He's one of the biggest sculptors in, in Rome. And then he's like, I love your writing and I like your look. So that's how I started, you know, posing as a muse. And then after the experience I had with him, I, you know, I got hired to work in art schools and, you know, I just started out like that. And my parents, like, like I said, they were never okay with this. Um, coming from a background, like, I, I mean, coming from a, a Caribbean background, I knew that my family was not going to be okay with it because mm -hmm. I grew up in a very conservative family. Like we're very um, strict on stuff. Like I was really brought up with a lot of principles and values. And then like, not that my family, I don't want to say that my, my mom was, is open when it comes to talking about sexuality, certain things. She taught me a lot of things and that's why I'm comfortable. I always speak about my mom when, when I write about like sexuality because she was a very sensual woman. But it's just that seeing me posing nude was not something that they wanted me to do. So they never really um, liked it. Even even now they still don't like it. Yeah. Crazy, crazy, but that's real. You know, um, you mentioned something. You mentioned growing up, you know, your family instilling certain values, certain morals in you. Um, as I've known you, I think that you still have those morals, right? Yeah. Because you're not out there just doing anything. You're not working with just anyone. You're not like selling your body for attention. No. This is actually an art form, right? That you've encompassed yeah. as who you are. Um, can you talk a little bit about the difference in that? You know, because a lot of people, when they think sensuality, they think that, you know, this person has no morals, this person has no values. But I see you as someone who is extremely, you know, you have extreme values, you have very serious morals. You know, so can you talk a little bit about that? How you've been able to yeah. the morals that you do into your work? Oh, yeah. So um, that's also because of my upbringing. Like, mm -hmm. I grew up in a family of, I have a mom and I have a dad. So my dad did, my dad had a big influence in my life. So my, like I said, my dad taught me how to write, how to think, how to not fall onto like peer pressure, how to have my own mind. My mom taught me how to be sensual how to behave like a lady, you know? Because all these things are part of me. Those mm -hmm. values, principles, I still follow them. Even when I became a muse, I became a sensual model, even if I did some nude work for artists, right? 
I still maintain those, those values. The way I interact with people, they respect me. Yep. Everything's about character at the end of the day. Like those mm-hmm. values is what build your character, right? Mm-hmm. So like I maintain this character. And I'm so like I am now this, especially this year, I am so grateful for having my mom and my dad in my life. Because mm. I could have done so many stupid things, so many stupid decisions. Had I not have those values instilled in me like early on, I could yep. have seen that, you know, especially in that world where you get so many offers and like yeah. demands and requests. So it could be overwhelming to know like what's what's the right path for me. I want to make money, but like, should I do this? Like, mm. should I? So it's like those values instilled early in me helped me tremendously in in how i manage my brand and like the decision i've made over the years so i I realized that it it was these things those values those principles Mm -hmm. that helped me maintain uh character even my fans they would tell me my fans will go to war for me they would tell you no not her don't (laughs) don't come for her like don't talk about her like don't say that He's not like that. So yeah. that's why I knew, like, I mean, like, I really maintained myself, like, carried myself in a way mm-hmm. where I gained the respect that I have now. I love that, that I did Powerful. that. Powerful. So I'm going to go back a little bit, right? Um, You mentioned working with schools, working with sculptors, right? So right. now there's a difference between, you know, being one-on-one, having someone, you know, see you nude or see you in a way and sculpting you or painting you as opposed to then now being in a crowd, being in a school, knowing that multiple people are going to see it. What was the mindset for you going from just the individual, you know, um, for yourself and then actually doing it as a public art? I was never scared of it. That's how I knew it was for me. I was never scared of people's opinion of me because I deep down I already know I am like I already know who I am so in a you know in a atelier or I should say art studio there's a vibe that no one will ever get on unless you're there nobody is ever going to understand what goes on inside on our studio between the artists and the muse that's very private that's very intimate like the vibe is not something I can really explain. You would never get it until you do it. You undress yourself and you let somebody paint you and they talk to you, they share certain things with you. It's very private. It's very like unique. It can never be replicated, you know? So when you share, when you share that, um, those images or the art, the, B- the BTS, people have an idea of mm-hmm. what it is like. But they don't really know until they see it live at, at an art show or see yeah. you understand the essence of it. Like certain things, you can only experience them when you are in the, you know, in that space. Yep. Get the essence. So, yeah, I was never, I was never afraid of um, the backlash I might get or the critics I might get. I, like me, when I want to do something, I just do it. I can't really care too much about what people are gonna say. Mm-hmm. Um, I care about how I deliver my work. Mm-hmm. Okay, that is a big deal for me. How I deliver my work, I care about that. I'm never not, I'm not gonna care about that. I care about that. But people's opinion, I have no control over that. Like how they see me, I don't have any control over that. That's why I love myself a lot because I know who I am. <laughs> but other than that, I don't know how this person or that person may see me as. I'm not sure. Yeah. Nice, powerful, powerful. So I want to talk a little bit about what was the feeling when the first sculpture, because you have now sculptures of you and paintings of yes. you on other parts of the world. Yes. What was your what was the feeling when the first painting or sculpture went to another country and people was able to learn about you who you never met, may never yes, meet, who may never understand your language? Like what's what was that feeling for you? Fulfilling. Like mm-hmm. I'm a young girl from Haiti. Um, you know taking a leap of faith, taking a risk. You know, like when, when my art was showcased in Rome, I remember the girl I was when I was in my bedroom. Cause I remember exactly that time when I said, you know what, I want a sculpture of me. It was like that, uh, it was like at night time. It was like around like really, it was late. It was like around like 2 a.m. in the morning. I was on my phone and I was literally scrolling down Instagram. I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna find somebody. I'm gonna find like a sculptor. I'm gonna keep DMing people, I don't care. So I found a girl, and I, I'm going to say her name. She's Chasta Wonder. She's one of the best models 
I've ever seen. One of the best nude models. Nice. I don't, I don't, I don't remember her nationality. She might be Nigerian. I, I, I don't want to say the wrong thing. I, I, I don't remember. But <laughs> I her sculpture of that's how I found Brian, like the first yeah. sculpture that I work with. And I'm like, wow, well, I want to, I want one just like that. And then I DM Brian through fighting her work. I always give her credit because she's also about part of my story. Nice. And then that's how I would like, you know, I have this sculpture of me. And when I, when it was showcased in Rome, it was freaking amazing. It was great. Like they tagged me in a lot of art, like art um, pages on Instagram were posting me. Like yeah. I went viral in a different world. Like I went, not in New York. Like I went viral, like in that world, like in Rome. I don't know who saw me from there, and like I had a lot, of, I had a lot of followers at that time. I think I gained ten thousand followers just from that, um, you know, interaction, like from that um, exhibit. I would say, Incredible. like a lot of people, and a lot of people were sharing my sculpture. It was just so freaking amazing. I'm like, what? I saw a post with like hundred k likes. Nice. It was my first, like you know how it is on social media, how overwhelming it can it yeah. can get. It was just like, wow, this is me. <laughs> this is you, girl. Good. It felt really good. No, yeah. that's you, girl. So let's yeah. let, let's talk about that, right? Um, for for a few social media. So there are a lot of people, you know, who um look at women on social media as just Instagram models, right? Um, the Instagram beauty, but you your social media fame comes from your real life work. Yes, right? yes, yes. Like, and, and I think that's real special about you. So can you talk about some of the, if, it, if there's been any challenges with people who just come to know you on social media, like what challenges have you dealt with and built? Because you have what, like 170,000 followers or something like that? Yeah. You have a lot of, right? You have a big following. Yes. Talk a little bit about that. So um, like I had mentioned it before, people are, that's going to find me now, they're not going to know the story. That's why I'm mm -hmm. doing these interviews so I can share them. Hopefully they can know the story. I can tell my story. Like I'm going to plan on create my own YouTube channel to tell my story. Like most people, because I already removed most of my work on my page. So you're not going to see my past. My past is not on my page because Instagram was easier back then so I could share certain things certain work like post certain some nudes like now it's just very cryptic you don't know what's gonna happen it's, you know <laughs> it became a very cynical place to post so you i'm very careful with what i post but somebody coming now you're not gonna know people are not gonna understand why people love her so much why they yeah. like adore her so much why they like why these people are why well, she has so much so much fans like you're not going to, I mean, it's not their fault because I don't, I don't really have, I, I really want to put, put out like a documentary and put like my storyline, how it started. That's I would it. love to That's do that it. because That's someone it. coming into, right? Like someone coming into my page now, you're not, Instagram doesn't show you like, you know, the full scope of what somebody is. They don't, you know, it doesn't do a great job of showing like who you really are. You can only show so much. So, like, I can't really worry about how they see me. But people who know me know me. They know what I did. Here we go. Here we yeah. go. Here we go. So, you actually, you know, um, I remember how, however many years ago or so, I found out about Patreon because of you, right? I think you, you went to Patreon first. Then you went to OnlyFans when you started building your subscription base. Um, what led you to create that? Like, yes. what inspired you to take it a step further and say, you know what? I have enough traction. Let me create a subscription base. And then it just blew up. What was the inspiration behind that for you? So um, it wasn't really an inspiration. It was challenges that led me to do that. It wasn't really, I wasn't inspired to just switch from one platform to another. It was like the challenges that I had that pushed me from one place to another. Like every time I, you see me shift from one place, thing to another or this it's not because i want to change all the time it's because of the challenges that i had encountered mm -hmm. in my path so when i had my patreon it was growing it was fast and i had somebody reported it so like every mm -hmm. time in the beginning of my journey every time i do something someone reports it every time i create like a page or a facebook page i had someone consistently reporting every single thing i was doing i don't know who it was but it was just every time i create something it gets, it gets deleted, taken down, I lose it. So I have to keep 
creating and creating and creating. So when I when I created my my Patreon, I really wanted to keep it. I did like the platform, but then they deleted it, right? Somebody reported it and it was removed. I don't really know what happened. It took me three months to get it back. And then when I get it back, I lost all my subscribers. So I had to start over. And then at that time, what I did it is I read, like, then I'm responsible. Somebody steals, your, somebody steals your work. So it was a lot of things that I was reading I was not agreeing with at that time. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to switch. So before I went on OnlyFans, I... I, I went actually to my website, my Wix website, where I created like a, my own platform within it. And I earned a lot of money from there as well. But there was an issue with how the people were viewing. It wasn't like user friendly, basically. So it was too many steps to see my content. It was too much. So the, the viewers, like my, my subscribers, they didn't like it. So that's when I decided to go on OnlyFans. And then when I went on OnlyFans, that was one of the best decisions I've made because it's user friendly. Um, you do get more options to make money through like messages. You can do PPP, which is like pay per view uh, messages. So like, there's so many ways to earn money on there, and I, I ended up you know staying there. That became my main platform for my subscription. Nice, yeah. nice. What backlash did you get? Because I know when the average person thinks OnlyFans, they think sex, right? They think sex. They think porno. Was there any backlash? Um, and yeah, was there any backlash that came yes. with OnlyFans? Oh yes, a lot of people when I announced that I was gonna go on OnlyFans, they were upset. They're like, "Oh, this is not what we saw for you. You're not <laughs> part of that, that world. We don't like." Some people unfollowed me. Some people were upset with me. Um, a lot of people said, oh, "Like, please don't do porn." Like, it's <laughs> a lot of negativity. But I'm like, first of all, guys. When any platform is created, I, I do understand it's mainly like, you know, sex workers on there. But even if there were sex workers on there, like, why are you guys, um, because most of you guys watch porn anyway. Why yeah. shouldn't they earn from what they earn, like what, what they create? So I'm, not, and I'm like, also sensual creators, I'm a sensual creator. I don't necessarily create porn. Okay. Mm -hmm. But my work could be erotic at times. My work is erotic at times. My work is sensual. So, like, are you telling me that I'm not supposed to go on a platform that is specifically built for people like me to earn money? Mm -hmm. Like, who are you to tell me mm -hmm. that? You can't tell me that. You can't tell me I to earn, earn from something that I create. Mm -hmm. So, are you saying that I should just post them on Instagram for free and never earn from, from what I create? Like, how am I going to continue on creating them if I don't earn from, from them? With... Um, earning from that kind of content. They feel like it's, it's not, it's not ethical, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't allow mm -hmm. align with certain values. Okay. Absolutely. So, but like, that doesn't make me any you know, worse of a person. Like it doesn't make me, a, you know, a woman without morals. It doesn't make me a woman without values because I earn from my content like i'm a creator i create that so i have to earn from it that's where the controversy comes from and the backlash comes from all the time because people think that once you have an only fans oh my gosh you become only fans they expect to see a lot more things like no yep. if yeah if i do create like a video all my videos, i sell them i don't post them on my only fans you have to pay to see them they're going to be sent to you on your message messages and you're going to see them you'll see my artwork you'll see like a few clips here and there but like full five minute, ten minute video, you have to pay for to see these. Like that's yeah. basically why we have our platform to be able to monetize our content. Absolutely, absolutely, and I think that's extremely powerful. You know, two things. Number one, you understanding that you as a creator should own all of your content, right? And with the social media platforms. I mean, Facebook, Instagram, you don't own the content, right? As you mentioned, they could report it, they could remove you. So you understanding that. And what I really love about what you've done, oh no, you're gone. Can you hear me? Oh no, your internet. You hear? Yo, yo. Yo, 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 yo. Yo, Dale. 
Oh no. We got a little bit of technical difficulties. Um, let's see if we can work it out, if she can work it out on her side. But I'm um, yeah, great interview, man. It's a great conversation so far. Jodell, again, is extremely inspiring. Even to myself who doesn't do Sensual Art, you know, um, don't really watch it too much. You know, um, I might see some stuff online, but do not really subscribe to anything. But the sister is an inspiration to us all, you know, because as I was going to mention, one thing that I love that she hasn't done, she hasn't let anyone box her in. You know, um, from just writing on social media to now being a full-fledged CEO and a journey in between, she's kept she kept shifting, she kept elevating, she kept adjusting and readapting. You know, um, I think that's her messaging me. Let's see what she's talking. But um, yeah, man, you know, she's coming back online. Give us a little bit of time, people. I apologize. I apologize some technical difficulties she'll be right back but this is what we do at the sugar ray show man you know we're figuring it out man we're online right now people are in different cities people are in different countries people have different weather patterns you know she has she's down in florida and there's a bunch of rain where she's at you know and so she's like the rain knocked out the internet which it happens it's happened to me here at home in queens new york you know um i've been on the internet talking to people and then the rain came and then the internet was out for an hour or two hours, you know, and then sometimes even turning my phone into the mobile hotspot didn't, you know, wasn't sufficient. Um, so we just got to be patient, you know, as we build the journey. Um, I do got some exciting news I'll share with you guys at a later date uh, about the Sugar Ratio, some updates for season two. You know, we're um, working on season one right now. Season one is going to be all um, virtual interviews like this right here using StreamYard. Shout out to StreamYard for the platform they've created that um, have get, has given me the confidence, you know, to do this show like this consistently um, with various different people. If, if you know me, you know this is something I've been working towards for a very long time. Um, since 2010, when I had my first blog to radio show, I've sporadically interviewed people, um, video, audio, but I've been, you know, I guess you could say yearning to get back to consistent video interviewing, um, you know, never really considered virtual, but now we are virtual and um we're gonna keep going okay there she is our esteemed guest our esteemed guest is back so what i was saying before you know um technical difficulties was two things i love about what you did um and what you've done one is you haven't let anybody box you in right I um, what? you haven't let anyone create or put you in a box no. Right. You know, people love to put us in boxes and be like, well, you're a writer. You shouldn't do photos. Well, you're doing writing in photos, but you got to do it on social media. Right. You continue to elevate, not allowing yourself to be boxed in. And with that, you have continued to find ways to make your work um, accessible to multiple people in an easy way. Right. User friendly. So can you talk a little bit about that? Um, where do you get the resilience to, you know, to, to not be boxed in, to continue to have your path, have your tunnel vision, and stay locked in. Talk a little bit about that. Sure. So how I did that is one thing I figured out early on in life is to never give yourself any title, to never <laughs> stay attached to any titles. Because as a human being, you are, you are multi, like multidimensional. We all are. Yep. Okay? That's one. So if we are multi-dimensional, why do we stick to one title? Like, why do we want to be called doctors and that's all we do forever? Mm. Some doctors can play the guitar. They go at gardening. There's yep. so many things we can we do, but we don't like honor them because we want that one title. Yep. I, don't, I never wanted that for me. I'm a, a highly flexible person. I have so many other skills that people probably don't even know about. <laughs> like, I'm always evolving. I'm not, I'm not going to say, well, I'm a muse and I'm going to be a muse forever. I mean, I'm going to be only a muse and never going to do this. So like, I'm not going to evolve and, and try this. No. So what I kept doing is, and honestly, I keep trying new things because I knew people were going to attack me. So I didn't, mm -hmm. I never relied on one thing. I kept trying new ways to earn money, new ways to elevate. Like, I'm like, okay, if this don't work, this will work. Mm -hmm. Because I'm like, okay, let me put all the solutions and all the ways I could do this. Mm -hmm. like, nice. ah, okay, I'm a muse and I'm promoting like uh, sensuality. I can write a book. 
I can have a platform. I can yep. sell products. I can become a business. I can become a coach. I can become so many things. I can sell courses. Like so many things can can be done with one idea. One idea is is like it's like a a, a little seed that grew into a tree and there's like multiple branches. And that's how I always, say, I always see myself as a tree. I always say if you try, you know, try me. I'm a tree. Like I'm gonna keep <laughs> going and keep, you know keep trying new things and. So I created a map for me, you know, I created a map and then I had like all those little, like, like a tree and I had all those little, um, um, how you call them? Like, I forgot the word, <laughs> I have all those little like marks on my thing. And then I'm like, okay, well, if I don't create this, I'm going to do this. If this don't work, I'm going to do this. So I have like, I had, a, a, I'm trying to look for the word. It's, I know it in French and in English. So, like, I created this, like, repertoire, I would say, this database, okay. and then I had all my ideas connected into one. Like, yes. one thing I like is being able to, connections, I love, like, to, I like when I, an idea is connected, this yes. to this. If you yep. come to my page, like, if you come to my page and you go on my LinkedIn bio, you will see that everything I have in my LinkedIn bio is connected. Mm. Okay, like my website, my coaching is connected because I'm teaching. I want to teach sensual creators how to like build their brand, and also I help people with like you know, I write like blogs about sensuality, and then my product is sensual. They sensual products, so they're connected to the main idea of my brand. So yeah. everything's connected. Like my workshops, they're all about sensual, you know, sensuality, like how to pose as a muse, how to explore yourself. I have retreats for people. If they want to explore how to live like a sensual lifestyle, so we have retreat to teach you that, how like you know how to do it with your partner, blah blah blah. So we have all these things, and they are all connected to one idea. If you go on my subscription and you like sensual content, some people don't like to see those kind of content, but some people like them. So I have my subscription just for those people. So I really wanted to have a connected brand. So I ended up creating all these things because I never. Put a hat over my head. I never say, okay, I'm this, and that's all I'm gonna be. Like, I wear different hats on my ideas. I like extend them and I make them yep. happen. Yeah. No, as you should, as you should. I mean, that's the mark of genius, which is also the mark of a Pisces, right? Yeah. Well, comes of ideas. Extremely flexible. Extremely, and you, and I think that when you look at the most successful people in the world, all of them are. Everybody. Yeah. Even if they have just one, even if it was one idea that got them their major success, they've been spawning off the, that one idea. They've been creating multiple outlets from that one idea, yeah. right? So let's talk about, um, you mentioned something, and just for the viewers, for those who, who, who don't know you, for myself as well, what are some of the talents that you have that people don't know that maybe you haven't shown yet that's still, you know, under wraps, if, if you care to share well, with me? I'm very business savvy. I think... Because I have, you know, because I had built this brand, I have so many skills, like, with creating content. I'm good with creating content. I can be, like, a social media manager. Mm -hmm. I know how to do all these things. Um, I'm good with managing or building a brand. I could do that. Mm -hmm. I don't think people see me and be like, okay, she can build a brand. A lot of people, they see me as a model still, like, a lot of people. And I have this issue because I know a lot of people, they're attached to my muse personnel. They, they still, like, very much attached to me. <laughs> You know, in my, you know, like nude, and like they just like see me as that person. A lot of people just think I'm a model, but I could do more than that. I think I can create a brand from scratch, and that's that. Like for me, my passion is really there now. Like I'm really building. Um, I'm partnering with a uh, with someone else who's really good with like with building a brand from scratch. I'm partnering with them to help brands in my world in the future, yeah. like maybe in a year to help like emerging brands to understand how to, you know, be on social media, understand the laws, how to like, what to post, what not to post. So like, mm -hmm. we're, we're gonna help them craft their brand from scratch, like their sensual brand. So I am so excited about that because I love, I just love building brands. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. one skill I have that I, I don't think people think I have it. But I do. Mm. On my page, you see, like, all of the posts, I, I, I'm the one who write them. Yeah. My posts, like, I, I just now hired someone 
to design like my carousels, like my stuff on my page. Yeah. And everything I've done them myself. I go on, on Canva and I just go and I write them and I post them. You know, like I had to teach somebody to learn how to do it just like me now. So I have more time. But I just yeah. literally love doing that. Like, <laughs> I literally love doing that. What was incredible about that, um, I mean, not to call anyone name, but it's, it's like, it's kind of crazy that people can see your brand, you know? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Those are my kids. Yeah, no worries, no worries at all. Yo, we this is real life. This sugar ray show is about real life and real people, man. There ain't no fake stuff here. If, exactly. my here. if my children was here, they'd probably be in the room with me right now trying to listen. All right, so I know, but um, mm -hmm. it's crazy that people could see your brand, especially those who've known you for a while, and not think that you built that brand like you built your brand. They don't, they, they don't want to, maybe they're just like. Think that I'm just a girl. Like usually the same, it's the same <laughs> mentality. The same. They put in the box. Like they don't, they can't see Absolutely. me do all these things. Like you don't, you cannot have all those skill, skills. It's not real. Someone is helping you. But my videos, I like. I I know how to edit stuff, pictures. I know how to edit pictures. I know how to edit videos. Like I know, I've learned. I know how to. My last website, I'm the one who built it during COVID. Nice. Somebody had helped me um, with the initial setup. But I wanted to redesign the website. I'm like, you know what? Let me just, it's COVID. Let me just learn. I had a lot of time at that time. <laughs> Let me just learn how to do it. And I learned. I, it took me two weeks to do it by myself. I learned how to do everything inside of a website. So now I can manage myself. If I don't have anyone to assist me, something happens, I can just fix anything that's inside of a website. Yeah, that's powerful. So one thing that I love about what you've done, and you mentioned it in this interview, your love for helping other people. Right, where did that come from? Where did that because there are a lot of people who get success, it goes to their head, and they forget that there are other people in their field who need their guidance, who need their support, who need their expertise. So where was that? Was that instilled in your parents? Or how did where did you get that love of helping people from? Well, that came from my parents. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know if I had told you before, my parents they have a school in Haiti. Yes, you did. They have a big school, like a it's like a two building. It's nice. like that long. Like nice. Okay, it's a huge school for like uh, elementary and high school. So it's a huge school and also kindergarten. It's like the whole thing. Nice. So everybody in the community sends their kids to my parents' school. Even I was in the school until nice. I was seven years old. Nice. Um, so I grew up seeing my parents cater to all these people in the community. Like when they, you know, they help them with their kids with education they help them with other things like businesses as well. So, well, don't use the phone. <laughs> yeah, so they help them with their businesses. So, they assisted them. Okay, I'm gonna have to take a break. Hold on, I mean, I'm gonna come back. Okay. That's that's when, what happens when you have kids. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we know the vibes, man. If you are a parent, if you are a parent, man, you know exactly how it is. You know, when you're working. Um, especially when you're a parent who works at home um, in different capacities, man. You know, you have family, you have children, you have a spouse, you know, you have anybody else you live with, man. There can be tons of interruptions, you know, um, and it's part of the process, you know. So me as a host, um, that's who I am. I've dealt with it. You know, I've been doing major interviews and my daughter comes in crying or my son comes in upset about something or, you know, I'll lay snacks out for them. I'll prepare them. They say they're good. And then 30 minutes into my meeting or interview, on one of them will come saying they want something else. And it's like, well, go get it, right? Like, you know where it's at. You can get it if my daughter wants something. My son is bigger. You can get it for her. Uh, but that's how it is, man. It's like sometimes, again, when, when, when you're at home doing work, you know, you can be, uh, you know, they, they'll leave you alone all day. And then the moment you start doing work, they'll exactly. come. Exactly. The moment you're busy, that's when they want to see their mom. <laughs> <laughs> they are so attached to me. They Absolutely. Are so, yeah. Well, I mean, let's. Let's go right there. How has it been managing being a mom with uh -huh. all of the work that you're doing? How has that been for you? It has been super challenging because I live in Florida now. I don't live in New York anymore. Mm -hmm. So, like, my family is in New York, and I'm pretty much on my own here with my husband. So, it's been really challenging to manage everything. But I don't know. You know, when you have love for something, you just find a way. Of course. Like, I just find a way. 
I don't know. I just always find ways to just keep going. I think that's one of my that's one of my greatest strengths. I just find ways to keep going. But I wanna I don't I wanna finish what I was saying earlier. I wanna finish. This is one thing I was writing about on my stories the other day about how seeing my parents help people in the community influenced me to be generous. Like I'm very unselfish with knowledge. Like I I help many um, central creators figure it out. Like a lot of people when they lose their Instagram, I'm always there to assist them. I don't know why. I just feel like I want to help them. Like I always want to help my my you know my other you know the other central creators that I know. Um, I because I know the struggle of having a page like that, like posting those kind of content and like trying to earn something from that. Like I'm always going. I always want to like be there. And that's why like, I, I become a coach right now. I, I, I want to assist central creators. Like, let's say a girl, she's like 21 years old, 23 years old. At that age, you do need someone to tell you, hey, do it this way. Go yeah. do it this way. Um, like, in the beginning of my journey, I didn't have anyone. Especially, you know, I told you, I'm, yeah. I literally am in the Haitian community. Mm -hmm. No one, even if they did it, you wouldn't know. So no one, do, no one does this publicly like I did. Okay, so no one has, a, I don't know if it has the courage, maybe that's their decision, but no one really, I don't know anyone that's big that did that the way I did it. So this is something I really want to do um, moving forward with my work. Uh, I want to remain as a coach to help new beginners. Nice. To, um, yeah. Nice. How does that feel for you being, you know, as, as you mentioned, um, the first person, one of the few people from your culture, from your background, to break into this work and to be successful at it without compromising your morals. What does that mean for you? Like, be more like specific, like as far as like my background? Yeah, coming from Haiti, right? Mm -hmm. Your background, as you mentioned, people in your community haven't done this work or no one who does it, they keep it private. What does it mean for you that you did it publicly and you have become successful at it? What does oh, that mean for you? I get it now. Um, well, listen, that was always my goal. <laughs> That was a challenge that I fully embraced in the beginning. And I, well, if anybody, like, I, you know, at some point I wanted to step away from my, like, my, my, my raw talent, which is being able to pose, um, being able to write. Like, I, I didn't know how to do these things. I didn't have anyone helping or I didn't see anyone from, from my country being embraced as that. So I'm like, you know what? If no one did it, I'm going to be the one to do it. I am going to be the one to actually do it. So it felt like a challenge and it felt beautiful to me. It looked beautiful to me. It looked like, wow, I want to be able to overcome that. I want to be able to um, be that first girl. Like I want to be the first. So that was um, something that pushed me every day. Every time I feel like I'm tired or I get you know, too many challenges at once. I'm like, you said you wanted to be the first. So, like, do you think that was going to be easy for you? Mm -hmm. You're literally a pioneer. So, like, you have to keep going without mm -hmm. who those other people would be able to do it. Now they have someone to look up to. Look up to. Mm -hmm. If had I not done this, who are they going to look up to? They're going to remember me. I know that. They're going to remember me. They're going to be like, no, there was a girl who kept going. She started as this. She's not, she has a business now. She has a brand. That is impactful. That is inspiring. When you don't give up on your dreams, mm. you inspire the people to follow theirs. And I've, I've created like a Telegram channel. I have mm -hmm. like other Haitian women, they're sharing their erotic poetry with me. Nice. That is super, like I'm getting goosebumps because I'm like, nice. wow. Incredible. That's so dope. She's like, I never told my family that I write erotic poetry. <sighs> I never shared it with anyone. I'm like, I'm the same way. I couldn't share my work with my family either. I couldn't tell them who I was. I couldn't tell them like, I literally am inspired all the time with like writings, my writings. So like my, like, you know, like my photos, like what I create, like I am so inspired all the time and my work comes from central things. So that's what I write. I don't know what that makes me. You know what I'm saying? So people yeah. don't have to tell people or like their families or friends about that. <laughs> Because they don't want to be boxed in as like, oh, why do you like this? Like, why do you, why do you choose to? We don't, we don't choose our gifts. It was given. It was given to you. Like, you cannot deny your truth. Like, I'm telling you, man. I'm like, 
I'm going to go and do this. I don't care if they call me this, they give me names, blah, blah, blah. blah. I'm gonna, I'm just going to go and do it. And still this day, I stand on my, I'm like, nah, I'm going to do it. I don't care. It's not easy. Today I was reading about like success stories of, from other um, brands and how much they, how many times they failed. I'm like, I don't care how many rejections I get. And I have gotten a lot of rejection already from mm. other for my other like ventures that I want to do. I've gotten a lot of rejections and I'm like, you know what? It doesn't matter. I'm going to keep going because someone has to do it. Someone has to do it. <laughs> Yo, I love that mentality. And that's obviously a testament to your parents, but that's a testament also to being a Pisces. A lot of us have that mindset where it's like, we have no problem being a pioneers. We have no problem going against the grain, going against what's normal and typical, you know? And that's one thing, you know, I love that you've done. Um, if you can real quick, you know, you don't have to, but so you have a happy marriage, you have a happy family, you're a mom now, you know, I love that for you. How challenging was it or was it challenging at all to find a partner who understood who you were, what you were doing, and that you weren't a typical girl, like just showing their body online? Um, what was that process for you to get to the point where you're now happy family, happy husband, happy children? How did that, how did, how did you navigate that? So it was never hard for me to find a partner. People would say, oh, you're never going to find a partner. That was, that's such a lie. <laughs> it was never hard for me to find love or to find appreciation or to be loved as who I am. I always attracted the, I'm not going to say the proper people, but I always attracted people that love me for me. Mm -hmm. um, I always attracted men that love me naturally as who I am. That's a natural gift. I never struggle in my life to find friendship or men or like female friends that love me as who I am. So like mm -hmm. finding my partner, it just happened that I met him through Facebook and then we hit it up from there and he saw my work. So why was, and he was like, he was okay with it. It was never, he was never yeah. against me. Um, the, otherwise I wouldn't be with him. So he was never against me and never, um, what can I say? He was never against me, never doubted me. He always wanted me to go and do, the, do this like as a business. He's like, don't just be a, a a nude model, do this as a business, build your own business, be a businesswoman. So he, he inspired me to become a businesswoman. He inspired me to become an entrepreneur. It's like you should always should hire. Should hire. Yes. Go, for go for it. Go all the way. Don't just do it and just like remain at that level. Keep pushing, keep going. So he helped me with photo shoot my videos. He was always present. On a lot of my sets, people didn't know that he was my man. He was there. I would pretend that I would pretend he's my photographer and he's there helping me. <laughs> Nice. But there he protected me, um, provided safety for me, helped me find certain dreams that I had. So he was always there for me. Like, that's one thing. Like, everybody has flaws in their relationships, but that's one thing I will never take away from him. Like, he's a great father, and he's, like, he supported me throughout my entire journey. Nice. No, I love that. That makes me so happy because um, too often – the other side happens, or we hear about the other thing happening, right? A partner gets together and things go haywire, right? Um, can you talk about how important partnership is to elevation, right? Because as individuals, we can only do so much, but when we partner together, someone to share ideas with constantly, to give us feedback constantly, how important is partnership for you? It's extremely important. Um, everything I'm saying to you goes back to my foundation, which is my family. My father and my mom, they built a business together. My mom went to school. She has her, her license to, ha you know, be, uh, you know, working with, to, to be able to work with kids and everything. And my dad is also a teacher and, and built his own school. So they, you know, formed a partnership. And I saw my mom and my dad work for their own selves all their life, like together. Yes. So not only did, did I, no, you know, not only did I was inspired to have my own business, I was also inspired to have like a great partnership with my men who I yes. end, end up getting with so as to build our, you know, our, our future, our, our dreams yes. together. So like yes. that's very important to me. When I met him, actually, that's one of the things I was attracted to me, attracted me to him. He was working on his own already. He had his own business. Um, he was also like business savvy and mindset was very like entrepreneurial like. So I'm like, okay, that's my kind of man. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so aside from being able to provide for me, you have to have that drive for yourself as well to to be your, your own man, to have your own mindset, your own 
you know, desires, dreams, yes. visions. So partnership was always important for me. So I, I think when it comes to choosing the right partner, when it comes to like building on together, I chose the right person. So I don't want to continue. I don't want to continue on my path by myself. Like it's not, it's not something any woman should do, especially when you're in that world. If you don't have a partner, you need to have someone else, like a friend, present for you to support you in your journey, like a community also. You need to have that. Like, um, for me, I, oh, in any relationships, if your partner is not constantly being involved in your dream, it's not going to last. Mm. You know, there's no commonality. There's no, like, you know, nothing yep. of stress. So what are we going to talk about if, if we don't mesh somewhere, we don't meet at the middle mm -hmm. somewhere? Like our work needs to connect somewhere. Ooh. So I think that's what brings you closer to someone. It builds intimacy, right? So it's important to have that with someone. No, absolutely, absolutely, man. We got a few minutes left. Um, I know you have a lot going on, you have a lot happening. What are you excited about? What do you have coming up in the next few weeks, days, months that you are really excited about? So like right now I'm setting up my coaching. Um, I'm very excited about that. And I am also excited about. I'm also excited about the fact that I am also including fashion into my brand now. So I'm, I'm working with um, designers because you know it's a new brand. Like right now, my brand is about sensual lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So it's about like showing how to live in your home with your husband, like how to go on a trip and live a sensual lifestyle, or how to mm -hmm. go on a retreat, how to you know take a sensual bath. Like we're gonna create all all kinds of content from our new brand. So I am so excited that I'm gonna work with different brands and also like designers. So I have one designer right now who's designing some nice looks for me. So yeah. that's the next level for me. I'm really excited about that level. Like I'm yeah. going to dressing really cute and nice yeah. and like sophisticated, yeah. which is also a part of me that I haven't shared like in seven years. So yeah. because of my muse work, but now yeah. I'm very excited to be back into like my fashion world. Well, yeah, yes. Nice. Yes. So I'm that's like making me smile and blush. <laughs> you know, that's incredible, man. I'm excited for you, man. Yeah. This this has been great. If you could leave the if you could leave our viewers with some words of encouragement, some words of inspiration, some advice for anyone who may want to get into into sensual work, man or woman, what are some last words you got for the people? So I would say to always follow your heart. Okay, follow your heart and build like a, a map for yourself. Like mm know where you see yourself in two three years from now understand how to meet those um goals that you have don't just set like you know a, a daily goal set like monthly goals like yearly goals so see your side you gotta see the whole picture in your, your head even if you don't have the whole picture for the next six months you need to know what kind of steps you're taking to get there and in the sensual world is not easy you need to do your homework we need to understand that there's different levels within it can do burlesque you can be you know mm -hmm. erotic artist you can you know can write there's so many other things you can create content so there's so many things you can do and so many themes you can implement into your work so you need to really learn how to define yourself okay and to understand the themes of your brand it's not just like you are everybody's a brand don't 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 let the word brand scare you like it's like you gotta be you know you have to if you make people laugh a lot every day, that is your brand. Yep. Okay? So if you write about like inspirational stuff, that's your brand. So that's what a brand is. You do one thing, people know you for that one thing. So as a sensual creator, what is that one thing that people know you about? Some yep. people they are into like the big and some world and they use sensuality, they use other things. So you can use other tools to get to where you want to go. So you need to understand these things. Then you need to understand how to monetize. You need to yes. understand how to yourself in front of people understand social media like how to work it how to manage it how to manage your time and yourself so there's so many things you have to understand but like i said the first thing is to define you and your brand and then from there take the steps you set up your goals you know you do your research and i believe that knowing how to earn will get you further nice. <laughs> Powerful, powerful, powerful. Listen, Jodell, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for the work that you were doing. Thank you for following your heart, following your dreams, going against the odds, not letting anything stop you. I think the world is a better place because you are who you are. So thank you, thank you man. Yo, 
I really enjoy this. I really enjoy this talk, and I'm looking forward to get the footage so I can use some parts of it. Of course, we're gonna yeah. drop it on Thursday. We're gonna drop it on oh, Thursday. Awesome. Where? Um, I'm gonna drop it on all of the platforms: the Facebook, okay. uh, clips on Instagram. The whole thing will be on YouTube. The whole thing will be on the Facebook. The Sugar Ray Show. Um, I write an article. We put the link on the website on my website. So you know, we're gonna spread it as far as we can go. All okay. right. That's awesome. But yo, this is your boy Sugar Thank Ray. You. Just wrapped up another wonderful episode of the Sugar Ray Show with the lovely, talented, brilliant minded brand building mom, wife, entrepreneur, <laughs> CEO. She's more than just what you think she is online. She's phenomenal, man. Jodel Duverso, incredible. As always, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. We all we got, but we all we need. Love you guys. Peace. Bye.